I'm Anish Bhatnagar. I'm the CEO of Seleno and also one of the medical monitors for our phase three program. I want to start by congratulating FPWR on organizing yet another amazing conference and also thanking them for inviting us. Uh, also want to thank you all for your interest in clinical trials. Uh, we realize that these are not easy and we really do appreciate your support in running these trials. So a quick word about us, Seleno is based in the San Francisco Bay Area. We are um, working on finding therapies for rare diseases and our current sole focus is to do this phase three program in PWS using uh, DCCR, which is disoxide choline control release. The study is called Destiny PWS. Um, some background on why we think uh, our approach might work. So the part of your brain that controls appetite is called the hypothalamus. There's fundamentally two kinds of neurons in your brain that control appetite. The NPY neurons that increase appetite and the POMC neurons that decrease appetite. So for various genetic reasons, most prominently the deletion of a gene called SNORD116 in PWS, NPY is elevated. So too much NPY is, is produced and that's what appears to cause the hyperphagia. So our approach using DCCR seems to target these overactive neurons, targets a receptor on those neurons, and normalizes the secretion of NPY. That receptor, called the ATP-dependent potassium channel, is also expressed on a number of other tissues like fat cells, liver, et cetera, and can cause some other beneficial effects that we have seen in the early phase studies as well. So what is DCCR? Disoxide choline controlled release is a once-a-day tablet it is based on a known parent molecule called disoxide. Disoxide was first approved in the mid-1970s to treat very high blood pressure. And it was used as intravenous formulation, which is now discontinued. The only formulation of disoxide available today is a two to three times a day oral suspension. So it's a liquid. It's used for one single rare disease called hyperinsulinism, too much insulin. In babies, it can be congenital, CHI. In adults, it can be because of a tumor called an insulinoma. Very rare in both conditions. For many different reasons, that particular formulation is not suitable for use in situations like PWS. And that's why we've developed DCCR, which is a salt of that form. And it's also a once a day tablet, which is much easier to use. Uh, there's extensive safety data, both from the parent molecule of 50 years of use of the parent molecule, as well as in DCCR um, in different um, studies that have been conducted already. A phase two study was conducted uh, at University of California at Irvine. The results were very recently published in a journal called PLOS One just two weeks ago. Uh, what they showed, just broadly speaking, improvements in hyperphagia, uh, lowering of fat mass, improvements in muscle mass, improvements in lipid profiles, and improvement in aggressive and destructive behaviors. So what we'd like to do is to replicate those, to show those in a larger study. And based on discussions with the FDA, the program that we have designed, the phase three program, is two studies. One is a phase three randomized double blind placebo control study called Destiny PWS, about 100 patients. And all patients who complete the three-month study are allowed to roll into an open-label extension study where everyone gets drug. Initially, it was nine months, and it's now 12 months based on feedback from doctors as well as the families on the study. So where uh, the objectives of the study, the primary objective really is to look for a change from baseline in hyperphagia. Does it improve hyperphagia or not, much like we had seen in the phase two study? The other endpoints that we evaluate are changes in the clinician and the caregiver impressions of change, and also things like changes in fat mass. And obviously, we also look at a number of other endpoints, such as safety. The key eligibility criteria, the patients need to be at least four years of age. There is no upper age limit. Uh, they need to be in a stable care setting for at least six months prior to coming on the study. Uh, they need to be on stable regimen of medications prior to coming in. And the weight needs to be between 20 kilograms and 135 kilograms. There are some exclusions that relate to certain medications that patients may be on. And we would encourage you to contact the study sites on the phone and have a conversation and make sure that, uh, at least based on the first look, uh, your child is eligible prior to going in for a screening visit. 
So what do you what to expect? Uh, about seven visits in 15 weeks. Uh, these visits are frequent. We we understand that. We try to do what we can to help. We obviously reimburse families for any costs that they might incur. Um, most of the visits will have safety evaluations like physical exams, vital signs, etc. Questionnaires, just as the ones that have been discussing, will be administered at several of these visits. There's something called a DEXA scan, which is a quick x-ray scan that looks at body fat and muscle mass. That's done before and at the end of the study. In general, uh, these visits can, depending on the, the visits, can take you know, one hour, two, three to four hours each. Um, some of the visits in these trials are now being done um, by home health nurses to try and make it easier for the families. This is a list of our stu study sites. As you can see, most parts of the US are well covered. Uh, uh, the status of the study, we have about 19 active sites in the US, about seven in the UK. Uh, we expect to complete enrollment around the end of the year. It's hard to predict completely, but around that time. Uh, we know that more than 90% of the patients who are completing the phase three study are going into the open label extension study and are still on the study, which is a good sign. Uh, Based on feedback from the doctors as well as their conversations with the families, we have extended the open label period from nine to 12 months. And based on patients who are now at 12 months, we are extending it for a further period of time and making the visit schedule easier while the drug development process continues. Um, the one thing I want you to take away from this conversation is that we are hyper-focused on safety. We want to make sure that this is a drug that is safe for everyone who's taking it. So we do have an independent data safety monitoring board that looks at the data. They have done two separate reviews of the data. The most recent one was last week. And they have asked that the study be continued without any changes. I think I want